What if I told you scientists have found a way to break the fundamental laws of reality? They're creating dimensions that shouldn't exist, making particles move in ways that defy physics, and even building synthetic black holes in laboratories. And the wildest part? This isn't science fiction. It's happening right now in research labs across the world. Hey there, my brilliant bunch of quantum explorers, Theodore here, and today we're diving into something that honestly makes my brain do backflips. We're talking about synthetic dimensions. Yes, actual extra dimensions that scientists are creating in labs. And trust me, this is going to challenge everything you think you know about reality. We've got some amazing experts here to help us understand how they're literally bending the rules of physics and what it means for the future of everything from quantum computing to our understanding of the universe itself. Okay, so get ready, because today we're diving into something pretty wild. We're talking about synthetic dimensions. And it's wild, but it's also real science. We're talking about making, like, atoms or photons act like they exist in more dimensions than we even thought possible. Yeah, and I've got a stack of research right here. And to be honest, it's blowing my mind a little bit. We're talking about some really big concepts like quantum computing, simulating extreme physics. It's true. It's not just theoretical anymore. Scientists are actually building these systems now. Okay, so let's break it down. First off, what even are synthetic dimensions? So picture an atom ray. An atom can exist at different energy levels. Think of it kind of like floors in a building. So instead of moving that atom, you know, through our normal three dimensions, we can use those energy levels to be movement in a new dimension, a synthetic one. So we're kind of tricking the system, not actually adding a spatial dimension. That's a great way to put it. We manipulate the internal state of the atom, in this case it's energy level, and it's as if it's moving in a dimension that doesn't really exist, at least not in the way we usually think about dimensions. Okay, I think I get that, but why even bother? What's the advantage of all of this? So the advantage is we get to unlock all this amazing potential. For example, quantum simulation. Like, let's say we want to study what happens to physics around a black hole. We can't exactly create a black hole in the lab, though. Definitely not. But what we can do is create a system with these synthetic dimensions where particles act like they're in that warped space-time environment. It lets us study things that are pretty much impossible to observe directly, you know? That's really incredible when you think about it. So how are scientists actually building these synthetic dimensions? Is it all about manipulating atoms with lasers or? Well, lasers are one tool. There are actually other ways to do it too. We talked about atomic energy levels, but another way uses a property of light called orbital angular momentum. So light can actually have momentum even though it doesn't have mass. Exactly. And this momentum, it can make light kind of spiral like a corkscrew. And we can control how tight that spiral is. And each twist, you can think of it as a point in a synthetic dimension. Okay, so instead of floors in our building, we've got twists of light. This is starting to sound like a sci-fi movie. It kind of does, doesn't it? And then there's another way to do it that uses what we call momentum states. It's kind of like the atoms are surfing on waves of light, if you can imagine that. Surfing on light. Okay, now I definitely need an explanation. Okay, so picture each wave of light as a different point in our synthetic space, right? By messing with the phase or frequency of those light waves, we can control where the atoms, our little surfers, move in that synthetic dimension. So we're essentially building an artificial landscape for these atoms. You got it. And we can make it as basic or as complex as we need, depending on what we want to use it for. This is seriously blowing my mind. Okay, let me break this down because it's actually way cooler than it sounds. Imagine you're playing a video game. Right? In the game, your character can move up, down, left, right. But what if you could suddenly move through time itself as easily as walking forward? That's kind of what we're doing with atoms here. Except instead of time, we're giving them new ways to move that shouldn't even exist. It's like we're hacking the source code of reality itself. We've got atoms acting like they're in a higher dimension. Light twisting, atoms surfing on waves of light. It seems like there's a lot more to do with synthetic dimensions than 
just simulating black holes. Oh, absolutely. And one of the areas with the most potential is quantum computing. Quantum computing with synthetic dimensions. How does that even work? Well, the idea is you use these extra, well, they're not really extra, they're synthetic dimensions to make calculations way more efficient than we ever could with a normal computer. Okay, before we get too far into that, yeah. you mentioned simulating black holes earlier. How does that work exactly? So get this, extreme gravity, like the kind around a black hole, it warps space-time. Right, Einstein predicted that, right? Yeah, it, exactly. And it's been proven, too, by, you know, that we see it when we look out at space. So light bends around a black hole because space-time itself is curved. Exactly. Now we can't make an actual black hole. That would be bad. Yeah, a bit of a problem for everyone. But we can create a system, a small-scale system, where we can make particles, like photons, experience that curved space-time. And that's where the synthetic dimensions come in. Yeah, you got it. Imagine, okay, so imagine we make a synthetic dimension, right? And we're using photons and we're using their orbital angular momentum, those light twists we were talking about. We can actually change the properties of the dimension, the synthetic dimension, to make the photons act like they're in a curved space time. So we're like tweaking the settings on this fake dimension to simulate the effects of gravity. That's a great way to think about it. It's like we made a tiny black hole but just for how these photons experience it, you yeah. know? And that's huge for studying how gravity messes with quantum systems. That's crazy. Are there other, I don't know, other weird physics problems we can look at this way? Oh, yeah, definitely. Another cool one is that we can create artificial gauge fields. Okay, what are those? Okay, so think about, you know how a charged particle, like an electron, will move in a spiral in a magnetic field? Yeah, like in those pictures of particle accelerators. Exactly. Now imagine... We want to study those same effects, but on something that's not charged, like light. You can't just use a regular magnetic field for that. Right, because it's not charged. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But you can create a synthetic magnetic field. Wait, how do you make a magnetic field out of nothing? Well, not nothing. We manipulate those internal states. It all goes back to the, you know, that's how we get synthetic dimensions in the first place. So we're not like making a real magnetic field, but we can make these neutral particles act like they're feeling a force that makes them curve, just like they would in a magnetic field. So we're basically tricking them again, making them think they're in a magnetic field when they're really not. You got it. So with these synthetic dimensions, we can study how matter acts under these extreme conditions that we'd never be able to create otherwise. That's the idea. We can explore things like uh, totally new states of matter and all these crazy quantum phenomena. We can even look at the fundamental forces of the universe. Speaking of those fundamental forces, yeah. you mentioned something before, uh, lattice gauge theory. What is that and how does that relate to what we're talking about? Okay, so lattice gauge theories are how we try to understand the strong force, you know, what holds quarks together. Yeah, inside the nucleus of an atom. Exactly. And they help us study quantum chromodynamics, which is, well, it's basically how quarks and gluons work, but they're really hard to solve. So what we do is we simulate them using what we call lattices, basically like grids of points. So we take something continuous like the universe and break it down into points. Kind of like pixels on a screen. Perfect analogy. Yeah, exactly. But building a real physical lattice, that's pretty much impossible. So instead, we can use synthetic dimensions to be those points on the lattice. So each point in our synthetic dimension is like a point on the lattice. Exactly. It's like we're making a model of the universe, but we're mapping it onto these synthetic dimensions so it's easier to study. That's amazing. So we've got simulating black holes, making artificial magnetic fields, even trying to understand the fundamental forces of the universe. All with these synthetic dimensions, it seems like there's really no limit to what we can do with this. It's true. The possibilities really do seem endless. And one of the most exciting areas where this is being used is quantum computing. Oh, yeah. You mentioned earlier some new research that was published in Nature Photonics. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah. So this new research, it was done by this team led by Professor Roberto Mirandotti at INRS. And they worked with teams from Germany, Italy and Japan. And they basically use synthetic dimensions to process quantum information, but with light. Okay, so we're back to those twisting photons. Yep. They actually created what they called a synthetic photonic lattice. So it's like a network of light paths that are made to, you know, take advantage of those twists in the light's momentum. So instead of using electrons like a normal computer, they're using light to carry the information. Exactly. And light has a lot of advantages. For one, it can travel really far without running into things unlike electrons, which means it doesn't lose information as easily. So it's faster and more reliable. Exactly. 
And because it travels at the speed of light, obviously these operations are super fast. But here's the really cool part. They were able to show entanglement between photons and the lattice. Entanglement, that's that spooky action at a distance thing, right? Where they're linked even when they're separated. That's the one. Think about this for a second. We're not just creating fake dimensions. We're making particles in these synthetic dimensions do that spooky quantum dance we call entanglement. It's like we've built a dance floor that shouldn't exist, and now we're teaching light itself to tango on it. And the really mind-bending part, this could be the key to building quantum computers that are actually practical. And it's key for quantum computing, for things like quantum teleportation and all sorts of other really cool things. So by showing entanglement in this lattice, they've basically made a big step toward an actual quantum computer that uses light. They have, yeah. This is still early days, but it's super exciting research. It's amazing to think we might have these machines that use quantum mechanics, you know, like in real life. What's next for this technology? What kind of breakthroughs are we going to see? That's what I love about it. We don't really know. We're really just at the beginning. It's crazy to think that this all started with this idea, this idea of using internal states. And now we're talking about, you know, simulating black holes and making quantum computers. Yeah. And that's what I love about physics, you know? These huge discoveries, they often start with a really simple idea, like a shift in how we're looking at things. And with this, these synthetic dimensions, it's leading to, well, who knows how far it will go, yeah. right? Like, what are some of the things that we still don't know about this, you know, the big mysteries left to figure out? Well, one thing that I think is really cool is what happens when you apply synthetic dimensions to many body physics, trying to understand how all these particles interact with each other. So like a traffic jam, but with quantum particles. Uh-huh. Yeah. Kind of like that. Imagine a traffic jam, but instead of two dimensions, it's in four or five or even more. With these synthetic dimensions, we can create those kinds of scenarios with photons or atoms and see what happens as we add more particles or, you know, change how they interact. And that tells us what exactly, what's the point of creating these uh, quantum traffic jams? Yeah. Well, for example, it could help us find totally new states of matter or even design better systems for energy transport, you know, more efficient ones. We could even figure out how to get high temperature superconductivity. Which is? Oh, sorry. Materials that can conduct electricity with zero resistance at, you know, normal temperatures. It's a big deal. And all of this, these are things that depend on how lots of particles interact. And synthetic dimensions give us a new way to actually study those systems. So we're talking about solving some of the biggest problems you know, in, in material science and physics, all by using these dimensions that don't even exist. It's pretty crazy when you think about it like that, right? And here's another thought. What if we could create systems with tons of entangled particles in these synthetic dimensions? Yeah. We might be able to see entanglement on a way bigger scale than we've ever seen. I mean, that would be incredible to actually see. That would be mind-blowing, for sure. Yeah. But realistically, we can only build these systems so big right now, so how do we make them bigger and better? Yeah, that's something that researchers are working on right now. One really promising way to do it is to use integrated photonics, which means basically we can etch the whole synthetic dimension system onto a chip. Oh, wow. So like a tiny little photonic computer chip. Exactly. And by doing that, we can make way bigger, more complex systems with maybe thousands or even millions of sites. Plus, it makes the whole system way more stable and less prone to errors. Wow. So synthetic dimensions aren't just changing how we do research. They're changing the technology itself. But with all new technology, you have to think about the ethics of it, right? Are there any downsides or risks that we need to be thinking about? It's a really good point. Any technology, especially something like this that has so much potential, there are always going to be people who will try to use it for the wrong reasons, right? It's up to us to figure out what those risks are and make sure that it's used for good. Okay, that's good to know. So as we learn more about synthetic dimensions, what are you most excited about? Honestly, it's the things we don't even know yet, you know? It's like we're stepping into this unknown world and who knows what we might find, like even new laws of physics. The possibilities are pretty much endless. It's a really amazing time to be, you know, alive and seeing all this new science happening. Thanks for taking us on this deep dive. It's been amazing. Anytime. It's been a pleasure. And there you have it. Synthetic dimensions. From simulating black holes to building new quantum computers, it's changing how we understand the universe. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into synthetic dimensions. Until next time, keep those brains switched on and we'll catch you on the next deep dive. Well, 
there you have it, my reality-bending friends. We've seen how scientists are literally creating new dimensions in labs, simulating black holes, and pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible. You know, sometimes I wonder if the universe is sitting back and thinking, wow, these humans are getting pretty clever. Keep questioning reality, keep pushing those boundaries, and remember, the laws of physics are more like guidelines anyway. Until next time, stay curious, stay quantum, and keep exploring the impossible. Theodore out. Thank you.